in the 10 years that I've been leading guided walks and introducing people to the marine environment and other aspects of the coast, if you spend time telling them how it works and ident helping them to identify things, they engage more and more and more and more and suddenly become quite, quite deeply interested in the well-being of those species and the habitats that we find along the coast, which they may well not have had any interest in, 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 in the past at all. So what have we got? I mean, that we have lots of wildlife. I've only concentrated my 20 minutes on a few aspects. So I've picked out the amazing intertidal wildlife, the salt marsh and waders, and the temperate rainforest that Harry Barton talked about. With rising sea levels, what's going to happen is those coast habitats are going to have to move inland. <coughs> Again, Harry Barton talked about coastal squeeze. If we're going to allow them to thrive, we're going to have to make room and surely it would be much better to actually think about it in a strategic and positive way, work out how these coastal habitats can move inland, rather than taking it by surprise on a very storm-driven, windy night, and suddenly find we're all inundated. You may have seen this picture before. <laughs> Common objects at the seaside, this was actually on a postcard. It's almost certainly a beach in Dorset, and almost certainly it's somewhere Lyme Regis, uh, where the Victorian enthusiasm for rock pooling and marine life really took off in a, in a big way. But Somerset, it didn't happen, mainly because we have that vision of mud along the Severn Estuary. Now, there is mud. By the time we get to where we are here, there's still quite a lot of mud coming along, but there's not lots of it. So terribly uncomfortable to walk across, but they harbour a massive life Things like um, cuttlefish. Cuttlefish breed in Porlock Bay, they breed in Minehead Bay in, in a big way. There's something of a, of, a, of, a, of a hot spot for cuttlefish breeding. They look like a bunch of grapes. They're the same size as a bunch of grapes. But each one of those grapes holds an embryonic cuttlefish. This is one that was pecked open by a, 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 a herring gull. I just thought well, that won't survive because it, it'll, it would be eaten. But eventually, those cuttlefish will hatch out into those amazing uh, marine mollusks, which are, are really quite super intelligent and actually fabulous to look at. So they're out, they're out in the sea here in Pollock Bay all the time. They breed there in a big way. We also see in the rock pools here quite a lot of common squid. They're not, not on a daily basis you won't find them, but I've found them four or five times a year, particularly around Gore Point and around the harbour here. Uh, so that one's about, um, about 18, inch, 18 inches long. This is the marine mollusk. It has the amazing ability, as cuttlefish do, to, to change their colour in literally seconds as you're looking at them. So they breed in Porlock Bay. We've seen them, uh, we've had diving surveys done via the Somerset Wildlife Trust. Uh, we know they, these are their eggs. We know their eggs are quite abundant offshore and appear that they're washed into, into Minehead Bay too, onto the, onto the sands there too. This is, um, that dot there is Fallen Point in Devon, that's Glenthorne, um, and this is what's known as Gore Point, just west of Paul Weir. This is probably the best place <coughs> in Somerset to investigate and look at that marine life. As the low tide drops, we have this magnificent um, kelp forest exposed. Um, it's called a forest because these are large, uh, large, Marine algae, but, uh, particularly oreweed, and uh, when the tide, uh, as the tide comes in and the oreweeds lift up as, uh, as they are, it turns this mollusk along Somerset's coast. This is only really appears at the very lowest point of the tide, where you have to really wait for a spring tide to go down quite deep. They're really quite common though. At the other end of Porlock Bay, at Hurlstone Point, is where you're most likely to find common sea urchins, which are not that common. But you have to be fast, because as the tide drops, they follow the tide down. They can move remarkably fast, and they will very soon disappear down, back down to the deep water. But they are there. There's dozens of them there. Um, and it's well worth it any time of the year. That's one of the wonders about marine life. It, doesn't, it is seasonal, but it's not like winter and summer on land. You can go there at any time of the year on a low tide, and you'll find absolutely amazing stuff. A lot of people are shocked that we have starfish on Somerset's coast. Um, but they are there. This is the common starfish, which is, it can be, you know, plate-sized in a big one, quite a big creature. Uh, we also have lots of other starfish. This is my, that, one of my pictures that Harry pitched. So common pippin star, common sand star, small pippin star, serpent star. They're all out there in their dozens and quite easy to find 
once you know how to look. One of the issues about a lot of this marine life, it, it, it really look, it looks quite alien. It has a mouth on, uh, on a petal, but this is what the kids love. They share their anus. <laughs> <laughs> so the central dot is where the waste material is coming out. <laughs> Five minutes left. I'm going to go faster. I'm almost there. Uh, they come in a variety of colours. So that's a core point. I mean, that could be in the tropics. Instead, it's just about a mile away. This is a bryzone. Yeah, I'm just looking at that. Bryzone, yeah. yeah. Scary one. I like bryzones. Everyone knows about, um, what are they called? Hermit crabs. Hermit crabs. <laughs> Loads of people know about hermit crabs, but often it's from looking in books. A lot of, I've got grandchildren, all their books about the coast have a hermit crab and a starfish. They've never seen them, but they know what they are from the book. And when they find their first hermit crab on the beach, it's really quite a revelation and a wonderful thing to see. But we, have, we actually have 10 crabs in Paul Bay.